extension and runway light replacement project and further that a copy of this resolution be included with the application to be submitted. Excellent. Move Councillor Clue. Second Councillor Mercer. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. Next is a recommendation that 2023 financial plan bylaw number 5272 be given first and second reading and further that a presentation be received and a public information meeting be held on January 10th, 2023. Thank you. Let's get it on the table. Move Councillor Clute, second Councillor Reed, Mr. Savard. Great, thanks, Your Worship. The community charter requires all municipalities uh, to adopt a balanced financial plan annually. Uh, the city prepares a 10-year plan identifying short and long-term requirements well in advance which enables council to set priorities and allows for planning and financial strategy to fund capital priorities without debt. The 2023 financial plan process has been challenging in achieving a balanced budget, uh, continued supply chain disruptions and high inflation in the local and global economies uh, have presented many cost containment obstacles with higher levels of inflation and non-discretionary costs uh, than generally faced. Uh, this is not unique to Chilliwack, and municipalities across the region, province, and country are facing the same issues. The city has a number of budgetary areas that are subject to inflationary and non-discretionary cost pressures. Uh, this applies to material supplies and costs related to general and contracted service delivery, uh, fee-for-service agreements, labor, and standard maintenance and operation of city facilities. Given the increased levels inflationary, in, of inflationary and non-discretionary provisions, uh, efforts have been made to alleviate the tax, uh, the impact on the tax increase as much as possible, understanding that uh, households and businesses are also feeling the inflationary impacts. In doing so, the financial plan is proposing only those additional provisions uh, deemed essential uh, within the areas of public safety and bylaw enforcement to support the public safety goals of council. To ensure financial obligations are met and public safety goals are supported, the financial plan proposes a tax increase of 4.48% for 2023. This includes public safety and bylaw enforcement resources that have been deemed essential for the provision of a safe community, three RCMP members, one RCMP support resource, two firefighters, and two bylaw enforcement officers have been incorporated. The plan is otherwise not proposing further service level increases. The RCMP have prioritized three additional members and one support staff position. The Chilliwack detachment is extremely busy detachment and the continued uh, prioritization provides uh, support for policing services. The additional two firefighters uh, have also been proposed to assist with safe and effective fire response with continued prioritization for staffing halls one and four which will also help to fill any vacancy gaps during firefighter absences. Two bylaw enforcement officers have also been prioritized. This is proposed in response to high demand for service from the community to provide for call volumes and patrol response. Financial plan continues with activities that support the climate action plan. This includes energy efficiency upgrades at city facilities, electric fleet and fuel conversion vehicles, installation of electric vehicle charging stations, continued active transportation infrastructure and transit service, plus tree planting and waste diversion programs. Within the 2023 capital plan, an indoor pickleball facility is proposed that would include construction of 10 regulation courts that would be protected from the weather elements and provide for year-round play. This would free up and provide additional availability at the Landing Sports Center for other activities and uses, including tennis. A Vetter Trail Bridge has also been included, which would provide connection of the north and south side trails along the Vetter River. A William Street Bri uh, Pedestrian Bridge project is also incorporated to provide pedestrian connections over Hope River. These projects are both subject to approvals <coughs> through regulatory agencies. Moving into property taxation stats and comparatives. 
Property taxation accounts for 72% of the city's revenue sources. Of total property taxes levied on a tax notice, only 64% represents taxes levied by the city for city services. The remaining 36% is levied, collected, and remitted on behalf of other government agencies, uh, with the largest portion of this representing school taxes for the province. 48% of the city's levied property tax, uh, taxation is allocated to protective services, with policing the largest component at 36%, followed by recreation and culture, including libraries, and transportation and operations, including transit. In looking at property tax comparatives among municipalities, uh, we review data provided by the province, uh, which separates all components of taxation, plus other service fees, uh, and charges, um, which allows for dependable comparisons between local governments. <coughs> In comparing general taxation on a representative home among lower mainland communities, Chilliwack remains at the lowest levied, providing the greatest affordability for its residents. When adding water, sewer, curbside waste collection service, and regional district levies, uh, Chilliwack is again providing the most affordable fees and levies. And Chilliwack also maintains low business uh, taxation multiple for business classification uh, taxpayers within the community. Moving into community engagement survey results. Uh, the city uh, provided two budgetary survey, uh, service survey opportunities throughout the year uh, to receive input and feedback from the community. Uh, the first was a survey insert with the tax notices in the spring with an online engagement survey in the fall. Uh, it should be noted that the survey responses do not drive or direct the financial planning process, but rather provide council with supplementary input and feedback uh, to information they receive on an ongoing basis as they make careful and thorough decisions in setting budgetary priorities for the city. On the ranking of service importance, protective services ranked high for both police and fire protection. Flood protection also remained of high importance, as was roads and transportation. Community events and bicycle networks received the lowest important rankings. When looking at areas for allocating tax dollars, roads and transportation was the only service where the majority of respondents would like to see a higher allocation. Uh, for the remaining services, majority of responses chose the same allocation. And on the allocation of funding, the average funding allocation closely matched the trend seen with the service importance ranking. And the majority of respondents also answered that they received good value for their property tax dollars. So financial plan schedules will be available on the city's website under chilliwack.com forward slash budget. A public meeting will be scheduled for January 10th at 630 <coughs> and any comments or feedback can be emailed to budget at chilliwack.com or at clerks at chilliwack.com. And this presents the city's 2023 financial plan. Thank you, Mr. Savard. Any discussion? Go ahead, Council Mercer. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a general comment. I want to thank staff. Uh, this is an uh, incredibly comprehensive, uh, detailed um, plan that was put together. Um, you know, it was a little bit like swimming upstream, uh, trying to balance all the priorities. I don't think in my short time, this would be my fifth year, that we've ever been faced with um, such heavy cost of living and COVID-related costs. Uh, um, that were non-discretionary on our part and it left very little room for us to play so to speak and and look at our comprehensive municipal plan and look at everything that was wanted uh, in the city I, I think we collectively knew as we went through this discussion that there would be perceived winners and losers and um, we tried to do our best to make sure that uh, what we heard what we saw uh, through the um, um, the surveys that were done, the two that were mentioned in the presentation, um, we tried our best to hit the mark. Uh, and um, hopefully the, the years in the future will be um, a little bit more free, if you will, and uh, the uh, non-discretionary pressures won't be as, 
as hard as they were this year. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Mercer. I've got Councilor Shields and then I've got Councilor Clute. Thank you, Your Worship. And just, just to add on to uh, Councilor Mercer's comments, um, yeah, this was this was a really tough one to, to go through. I mean, this past year, the inflation that we've all gone through has, has hit us very hard in the pocketbooks. And the last thing we wanted to do was to to add to that burden. Um, I think staff did a wonderful job of balancing things off. Um, if you put it into perspective, inflation ran about 8% this year. We're, we're at uh, less than 4.5. I know that doesn't... Uh, doesn't sound great to anyone, but um, I think we're, we're, we did a good job of balancing and, and not hitting people too, too hard. So uh, thank you to staff, Mr. Savard, uh, uh, particularly for, for all this hard work. And, and uh, I look forward to comments from the public and, and uh, discussions on January 10th. Councillor Clue. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, similar to my uh, my colleagues, um, I too want to echo my thanks to Mr. Savard and, and his team uh, for all the the work that they went uh, that went into presenting this uh, financial plan before us today. It's uh, without a doubt a challenging year, um, and I think uh, every community uh, is struggling with the same issues. Um, but because of the hard work of um, Mr. Savard's team and uh, you know the prudent uh, leadership of the city in the past years we uh, we're not coming forward with a, a higher tax allocation which would have been a, re a reality um we you know many communities i think i read today terrace is proposing over 10 percent tax increase the rcmp contract that has been downloaded to every local government um, takes up a substantial portion i think it's 2.1 um, percent for our uh, financial plan um but I, I certainly uh, understand with a growing city, we wanna make sure that uh, public safety is paramount and that they have the tools they need. Um, I too look forward to hearing the, the public's input on January 10th, uh, but I do wanna thank staff for um, the really uh, hard work that went into um, keeping it as low as possible. Thank you. And just a message to our IT staff, apparently there's no audio on our live council streaming. Just give him a second here. Maybe the timing was good when we're talking about budgets and you can't see what we're saying. <laughs> or maybe we could take a five minute break. Okay, we'll take a five minute break.
that. Um, any other discussion from from council? We're good. Oh, go, go ahead, Council Reed. Thank you, Your Worship. I just too would like to acknowledge the hard work that the staff put into um, creating this very extensive plan, and um, that they acknowledged the need of the community and the voice of the community, and in what. Um, where they put the recommendations. So just want to say thank you for that and thank you for all the hard work and Good. keep it up. Good. Okay, I will call the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. Next item is a recommendation that a public hearing for zoning bylaw amendment bylaw number 5261, which proposes to rezone property located at 10233 Wedgwood Drive from an urban residential zone to an urban infill zone be called for January 10th. Move Councilor Mercer, second Councilor Reed. All those in favor, opposed motion carried. Next item. It's a recommendation that zoning bylaw amendment bylaw number 5269, which proposes to rezone property located at four five, or sorry, 46589 Portage Avenue from an urban residential zone to an urban infill zone, be given first and second reading and further that a public hearing be called for January 10th. Moved by Councilor Clute, second Councilor Shields. Discussion, all those in favor, Opposed motion carried. Next item. This is a recommendation that zoning bylaw amendment bylaw number 5271, which proposes to rezone property located at 45790 Reese Avenue from an urban residential zone to an urban infill zone, be given first and second reading, and that a public hearing be called for January 10th. Moved by Councillor Mercer, second Councillor Reed. Discussion. All those in favor? Opposed motion carried. Next item. Recommendation that zoning bylaw amendment bylaw number 5274, which proposes to rezone property located at 46080 Camrose Avenue from an urban residential zone to an urban infill zone, be given first and second reading, and that a public hearing be called for January 10th. Moved by Councilor Shields, second Councilor Reed. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. And the last item, Your Worship, is a recommendation that Council approve the renewal of temporary use permit 151 with respect to property located at B7105 Tahoma Place, subject to recommendations as stipulated within the temp draft temporary use permit. Moved by Councillor Reed, second Councillor Shields. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carried. Next item. Next is a recommendation to vary the agenda to bring forward agenda item number 15.2.1, BC Flood Strategy Feedback. Moved by Councillor Clute, second Councillor Lum. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed, motion carried. Next item. Next item is a recommendation Council Direct Staff to provide feedback to the province on the proposed BC flood strategy as summarized in the staff report dated December 15th, 2022. And we have a presentation. Let's get it on the table here first. Moved by Councillor Mercer, second Councillor Shields. Mr. Friesen. Good afternoon, your worship and <coughs> members of Council. The okay. Got, got some technical difficulties today. There we go. There we go. Yes, good afternoon, Your Worship and members of Council. The proposed BC flood strategy includes a series of actions that fall under four program areas. Understanding flood risk, strengthening flood risk governance, enhancing flood preparedness, response, and recovery, and investing for flood resilience. And I'll speak to each of these. The proposed actions for understanding flood risk include floodplain mapping, risk assessments, and strengthening dike regulatory programs. We want to emphasize to the province that it's important to recognize that communities are at different stages in understanding flood risk. Many communities, including Chilliwack, have already carried out extensive studies and investigations, and we are eager to move forward with flood protection uh, mitigation measures as, fun as funding is available. So although we support this work uh, where it's needed, we don't want the funding programs to be delayed pending additional study. The proposed actions for strengthening flood risk governance include improving First Nations involvement in flood resilience decision making and updating provincial legislation, um, regulations, policies, and technical guidance. The intentions paper specifically mentions seismic resilience and incorporating fish-friendly green infrastructure. 
So overall, staff are supportive of these initiatives, but we are concerned about the recent shift we've seen in provincial implementation of uh, policies and guidelines. For example, <coughs> provincial staff have signaled that they don't think sediment management is a long-term solution for flood protection on the Vetter River, even though it's a cornerstone of the Vetter River management plan that was originally developed under the guidance and direction of provincial staff. And engineering staff also continue to be concerned about the financial and timeline implications of the province's seismic policy. As an example, it took us over two years to receive Provincial Dike Maintenance Act approval to raise a section of the West Dike where seismic upgrades were cost prohibitive. For flood protection upgrades, um, sorry, flood protection upgrades are really important and we need to emphasize the need for feasible solutions that can be funded and implemented in a reasonable time frame. The proposed actions for enhancing flood preparedness, response and recovery include improving flood forecasting, flood response exercises and recovery planning, including Build Back Better. And staff are supportive of all of these initiatives. The River Forecast Centre has added capacity, but additional improvements are needed because communities rely on the flood forecasts for important decisions about emergency works and evacuation alerts and orders. And I've included one of the forecasts from the 2022 Fraser River Freshet, which shows flows possibly reaching uh, one in a hundred year levels. And um, there's acknowledgement that there's a lot of uncertainty in the modeling and uh, weather forecasts. So they you know, typically include a band showing highest possible or anticipated higher bounds of the forecast and lower bounds. Um, but in this case, the actual flow ended up being even lower than the lowest flows. So it just poses challenges for municipalities and any improvements that can be made in that forecasting is, is definitely um, warranted. And of course, we also saw the importance of flood preparedness, response and recovery efforts when the Nooksack and Sumas River systems flooded in November 2021. The proposed actions for investing for flood resilience include enhancing investments in flood avoidance, accommodation, protection and community led retreat. Staff is concerned about some of the language in this section of the provincial intentions paper. It states that structural flood protection will be a less desirable approach in the future, except in cases where critical infrastructure, large numbers of people or vulnerability or vulnerable facilities exist. But this wording is very vague. What do they consider a large number of people? Um, and it also mentions people learning to live with their feet wet. So we are concerned about flood avoidance and accommodation concepts being pursued, for example, for agricultural land without fully understanding the economic, food security and environmental implications. And we've already had provincial staff ask us to review options of setting a dike back in an, in an agricultural area, as an example. So we want to emphasize that increased funding is critical. It is the biggest limiting factor for Chilliwack and many other communities. And the funding should be flexible enough to support whatever solutions the local government and First Nation communities and their technical experts or consultants determine are the most appropriate based on cost benefit, cultural and environmental considerations. And just a couple of final general comments. The province would need to significantly increase their staffing levels and technical expertise to successfully implement the strategy. And the strategy needs more details about specific steps to achieve implementation, including a commitment to a timeline and funding for improvements, or it risks uh, being a high level <coughs> statement of principles without being able to achieve the necessary improvements in flood protection and resilience. Thank you for your report. It all boils down to money. Councilor Mercer. Thank you, Worship, and uh, thank you for the report. Uh, I think your last comment, um, you know, strikes the chord that everybody needs to hear. That, you know, it's it's kind of, a, and I'll paraphrase my words, not yours. It's a, a high-level commitment that's doomed to fail because of the time constraints uh, being put on it. Um, you know. It's a little bit disingenuous on the part of the province. I think only in the last couple of weeks have we actually learned the names of anybody who may have received any money from the flood last year. 
uh, after all these great announcements that were made that uh, money's coming your way will help you get back on your feet better than ever. Uh, and until a regional district meeting last week, I don't think anybody knew anybody that had actually received any. So, and then for the province to um, use as an excuse uh, for the lateness of the, uh, the payments for rebuilding to residents of the Fraser Valley, Chilliwack included, um, that it was workload on their part uh, that caused the delays, uh, again, just speaks volumes um, to, to yeah. the position that we're in. So, um, you know, we'll keep moving straight ahead, but uh, I think rest assured the city will um, will make public our challenges uh, as we move forward. And if these deadlines are uh, unobtainable by a city that moves in lightning speed uh, in comparison to our provincial government partners, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure our public would be uh, would want to hear that. So um, stay tuned, but fingers crossed. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me, go to them. Uh, thank you, Your Worship, and um, thank you, um, staff, for your uh, presentation and for just for uh, uh, providing that good uh, feedback. I think it's really important, in particular, um, share the concerns around um, meeting communities, I guess, where they are. And I think, you know, in Chilliwack, we've done a lot of work on um, flood protection uh, planning and identifying um, what structural flood protection and what non-structural flood protection needs to be put in place to best protect the community and to protect the environment. Um, and I think um, one of the challenges I have with the BC flood strategy is that it, it, um, it further delays us getting to action. So I hope that the province takes um, our concerns very seriously. Um, Chilliwack is um, considered not just uh, in the Fraser Valley, but across the province as being uh, one of the model communities in terms of looking at flood protection and all different aspects. Um, and I wouldn't want to be punished for being, um, you know, one of the leaders. Really, um, this, as you as you've identified, um, the main challenge really exists with the province and the federal government not coming to the table in a stable, predictable um, manner when it comes to um, funding flood um, infrastructure. And you know, along with the fact that now you've got the province kind of shifting the ground underneath our feet a little bit in terms of how many different players, additional players they want to put in the game, uh, changing the goalposts when it comes to um, seismic concerns, changing the goalposts again, it sounds, on um, managed retreat, which uh, again, some pretty loaded terms there. Um, when um, we've got, again, you look at Chilliwack and the large percentage of of where our population lives is on the floodplain. Um, I would put forward that there's no real realistic way right now to manage retreat off the floodplain in Chilliwack without completely decimating uh, the population. And I'm not really sure where you would retreat to. Um, maybe up, uh, maybe up beside you, uh, Councillor Mercer, but. Uh, that's the, I, I believe staff have done a really good job summing up some of the concerns. I know um, it's, it sounds like they've been um, uh, very careful not to be too critical of the flood strategy because all in all, it's a good thing to have people talking about it. But um, again, we don't talk as cheap and it comes free with a haircut. So we need to move to action. Dr. Clute. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, also to, through to staff, thank you uh, for bringing forward this report and the concerns that uh, have been highlighted and uh, I believe that it has to be in this week, right? Uh, the 22nd, I think I read in their report. So it's coming I, I believe it's actually um, early January, but okay. it's before the next council meeting. Perfect. Well, I, um, certainly I, I echo uh, some of the comments of, of my colleagues. I believe um, there's there's so many studies, but we really do need that action. And, uh, and I know Chilliwack, through the good work of our staff, um, have excelled at identifying uh, issues. So one of the points on on the uh, on the presentation was, um, I think it said, should um, c community initiatives should be considered? I think it said, or needs to be considered. And I, I can't uh, agree more. Um, 
definitely uh, we've uh, been on top of a lot of the issues and uh, we just need to make sure that we get our fair share and that the government defense and the province um, you know recognize like we think of the the flood of November 2021 and we hear we've heard of people who are not allowed to live in their homes because it's deemed unsafe they are paying rent to live somewhere else or paying mortgage for their damaged homes so it it, sometimes it seems like they're working in independent silos. So I, I really appreciate the work that's gone into this and bringing that forward to the province. Thank you. Mr. Shields. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, yeah, I think uh, staff had some good input there. And I think the big thing is, and, and it's been brought up, is is not to paint every community with the same brush. There's, there's certainly communities that are far behind us in what they've done with flood control. Um, and I think it is it is, you know, naive of the government if they think that 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 they're just going to come across and 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 in one foul swoop and and fix everything. So good feedback from staff. Um, we certainly don't want Chilliwack to go through what a uh, what a Merritt or a Princeton has went through last fall. Um, and and I think time is of the essence because as we know this probably last fall was not an exception it's it's probably going to happen again and again and, and there's not a community in BC that wants to go through what those other communities went through so uh, I think all communities got to push back hard and I'm glad staff did on this one. Uh, it's a question Ms. Friesen is, is there a, uh, a vehicle for us to get a response from the province with our concerns or is it just going to be put into a into a file and put on a shelf and I, I, I'm just curious how the mechanics of that works. Yes, uh, Your Worship, my understanding is that they will be um, receiving feedback and then providing a summary, but we can also in, in our letter, re, you know, request a specific response. Well, I'll let you decide which way you you, you, you want to go there, but it, it'd be nice to know what, what their response is to mm -hmm. our concerns, mm -hmm. which I'm sure will be um, the same as a lot of other communities as well. So, okay, thank you. A any other questions, comments? I'll call the question. All those in favor, oppose the motion is carried. Next item. Next are the mayor and councillor's reports. I'll start with Councillor Lum. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, thank you to staff for uh, accommodating a uh, Zoom connection. <laughs> Saved me from uh, having to dig out of a snowbank. Um, on uh, December the 7th, we had our meeting with uh, the OAC, the mayor, and CAO. Um, on December the 13th, had a meeting uh, with a number of folks on the next steps for Next Gen 911, including the CAO of uh, Ecom and a number of uh, newly elected uh, folks out in Metro Vancouver area. On the 14th, took part in uh, disability justice training, and then later in the afternoon, a bit of a walking tour of the uh, dike system with uh, some members of Shem and Squaw First Nation. Uh, on the 16th, attended uh, the Chilliwack Hospital Foundation uh, board meeting and then later in the afternoon had a introductory uh, meeting with our new municipal affairs minister, Minister uh, Ann Kang. And that's all for me. Good. Uh, we seem to have lost Councillor Shields. No, nope, there he is. Go ahead. Oh, sorry about that, Your Worship. I, uh, I'm still at work and we've got the odd person stopping in. <laughs> so relatively quiet, two weeks, uh, 14th, uh, did uh, some disability justice training, which was uh, in advance of, uh, of our new uh, accessibility and inclusive uh, committee that uh, we'll be firing up next year. Um, other than that, it was, it was uh, fairly quiet. Uh, just a reminder out there as we look at the roads that uh, you know the snow plows are out there it's an ugly ugly fall of snow please respect when they uh, when the plows are coming through and, and uh, if you see uh, if you see a neighbor spin their tires maybe uh, pull over and give them a hand and uh, and uh, don't leave anybody stranded out there and um, just one last comment to our uh, to our uh, our missing counselor uh, Harvestering that 
uh, that uh, isn't with us today, today and uh, just hoping everything is going great for him and uh, speedy recovery. And uh, we miss you, buddy. Good point. Councilor Mercer. Thank you, Your Worship. As was said on the 7th of uh, December, we had our monthly meeting with uh, our OIC, Superintendent Levy, uh, sorry, uh, David Lee, uh, as part of the monthly update. Um, on the 13th, uh, Design Review Advisory Committee meeting, uh, as well as later in the evening, a, uh, the great opportunity to attend the retirement function of our, uh, of our very own Ryan, Ryan Mulligan. Uh, Ryan, you, uh, after 30 years, I believe was the number, uh, you are the gold standard. Uh, you you uh, led and participated with uh, integrity and always with a sense of humor and uh, a great deal of patience. Uh, by my count, uh, probably about seven or eight uh, sets of mayors and councillors uh, who all had great ideas for you to listen to. On the 14th um, Public Safety Advisory Committee meeting, on the 15th, the Regional District and Hospital Board. Uh, and here we are, uh, last meeting of the year. Um, the weather's not great, uh, but I know everybody will be out celebrating. Um, let's have an accident-free uh, and fatality-free um, Christmas season. If you're, you're drinking and enjoying yourself while you're partying, please partake of the options available to get home safely. Um, doesn't look good on your resume or with your family to, to spend the night in a cell block because you've made poor decisions. So please don't drink and drive and everybody be safe and Merry Christmas. That's our read. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I, there, a few things have been going on since I was last here um, and got the opportunity to attend the Thunderbird Lane grand opening, which was wonderful to see a few weeks ago, just the exciting things that are happening in downtown Chilliwack and the expansion that continues on um, and the opportunity to attend a SEPCO board meeting um, with lots of great things happening with the Chilliwack Economic Resource Network and, um, and the city there. Also, um, just in this past couple of weeks, I also attended the regional governance orientation uh, for newly elected officials. So I had an opportunity to meet some colleagues around the province, uh, around the Lower Mainland, which was great. And um, had my first Fraser Valley Regional Library meeting. Um, the opportunity to also attend Ryan Mulligan's uh, retirement party and, and really, um, you know, see the amazing things that he's contributed to our community over the past years that I've, uh, over the past many years that I've been able to experience. So thankful for that. Um, and still uh, working with Chilliwack Health here community and, and doing some transportation innovations to hopefully bring some new ideas to, uh, through innovation to the city. Um, and on December 18th, finally, the Streams Multicultural Holiday Dinner, which I got to attend with you, um, Mayor. And it was just lovely to see the dancing and the celebration um, in, in such a beautiful way. So thank you for that opportunity. Councillor Clute. Thank you, Worship. On, um, sorry, the 13th of December, we had the uh, final design review committee meeting with the uh, the makeup of the committee as it was. And uh, was, we were able to thank those who participated in this last term. Uh, looking forward to uh, some new faces uh, come January. Uh, also attended the uh, retirement of Ryan uh, Mulligan. Um, a lot of good work that you've done in our, our city and, and thanks for putting up with the, the different councils and mayors and always trying to balance the, the needs. Um, We'll miss you around here. I know you still have some time here yet, but um, yeah, it was, uh, was good to work with you all these years. Um, the following day on the 14th, Agricultural and Rural Advisory, it's the same thing. We uh, met as a group for the last time. There will also be a significant turnaround as uh, several um, individuals who volunteered their time to make this uh, city stronger have uh, decided to um, take uh, or decided not to run, put their names forward um, for the committee. So there'll be some new faces there as well. The following day, uh, the 15th, we had the uh, Fraser Valley Regional District and Hospital District Board meetings. The 16th, I attended the uh, Seniors Christmas luncheon, luncheon at the Evergreen Hall. Always a good time. Um, and just uh, a word of thanks to all the operations crew that are 
dealing with the snow. It's always a reminder once in a while we get a reminder we're still part of Canada and it could snow here. And um, it's cold. So I hope everybody stays warm and uh, also take this time to wish our staff, uh, my council colleagues, um, and all the citizens of our city a wonderful and Merry Christmas. And hopefully you enjoy some downtime uh, with those uh, loved ones around you. And uh, maybe we'll have a white Christmas. It looks like we might. So it's all good. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. And I'm going to be brief. Um, on the 7th of December, I attended a bar watch meeting. On the 10th, I was down at the um, um, Vitter River for the Santa Shuffle, which is a fundraising event for the Salvation Army. There must have been a couple hundred people out there in the pouring rain, but they were running down. It was it, it was a great event. On the 14th, I attended SEPCO. On the 15th, um, FVRD and, uh, and the Hospital Foundation Board meeting as well. And I did attend a bunch of events that have been spoken to already this afternoon. And I too want to wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and just stay safe out there, everybody. Thank you. Next item, please, Madam Clerk. Next is a motion to adjourn to a closed session pursuant to Section 91 of, uh, sorry, Subsection 1E of the Community Charter. Moved by Councilor Mercer, second Councilor Reed. All those in favor, opposed, we are adjourned. <laughs>